everybody welcome or welcome back to my channel i'm a nexus i am a blind author content creator and freelancer and my pronouns are they them so today i am reviewing a flicker in the dark um i cannot remember the author name i am sorry i think it's stacy willingham um but i i could actually be very much wrong i can't remember the other name my apologies <laughs> um so that's what we're talking about today um there are content warnings on this book for discussions of um addiction and physical abuse if i remember correctly from the video that i was just watching but yes oh yeah yes this uh addiction and physical abuse um and no that's it yes that's it those are the content warnings i do give them to you but i do want to make sure you are aware i briefly discuss addiction in the video uh but i do let you know where that is um and i usually discuss and i discuss it in the context of the book itself so um just giving you that uh little warning ahead of time before we begin if you enjoy my content consider subscribing and or turning on notifications so you're aware when i release videos um that way you know if you're if you're looking for for content from me you won't miss it if you would like to check out my writing i have my website linked in the video description so you are um so you are welcome to go there and also subscribe to my blog um and if you would like to support the work that i do i have a ko-fi page where you can uh, support me there you could uh, hire me for uh, beta reading commissions or audio description critiques um, or you can um, check out my bookshop where you can check out my debut daughter of death so if you are interested in any of that everything will be in the description and without further ado let's get on to the video okay so it's the second time I filmed this. The last time I got interrupted because I had chores to do. So yeah, that's why that happened. But we are back and I will be taught and I will be reviewing a flicker in the dark, which really fun uh let me double check because i cannot remember if there are any content warnings i know i wrote i'm pretty sure if i have if there are any i wrote them down give me one sec i'm gonna double check if there are any content warnings because i cannot remember if there are oh, here we go because i did write a um a blog post for this which uh okay content warning Oh, discussions of physical abuse. That That is like the content warning that I put up here, that this uh, discussion of physical abuse. So when reading, I will personally not discuss this in the review, but if you are going to read, that is the, the main, uh, one of the, the content warnings, the content warning that I noticed. That, uh, so keep an eye on that um when you read um take care of yourselves okay that that is very important in all um in all things that you do so keep that in mind and with that where is my synopsis i'm sorry i'm just starting out um so a flicker in the dark oh by the way the flicker in the dark was also a uh the selection for january uh, it was the January book club pick of Envisions College Success Programs Book Club. So if you uh, are a blind or visually impaired college student, this could be a good resource for you. If you want to learn more about the, uh, the program, um, I will leave the website linked below. With that, here's our synopsis. When Chloe Davis was 12, six teenage girls went missing in her small Louisiana town. By the end of the summer, Chloe's father had been arrested as a serial killer and promptly put in prison. Chloe and the rest of her family were left to grapple with the truth and try to move forward while dealing with the aftermath. Now, 20 years later, Chloe is a, psych a psychologist sorry, in private practice in Baton Rouge, and getting ready for her wedding she finally has a fragile grasp on the happiness 
she's worked so hard to get. Sometimes, though, she feels as out of control of her own life as the troubled teens who are patients and then a local teen and then a local teenage girl goes missing and then another and that terrifying summer comes crashing back is she paranoid and seeing parallels that aren't really there or for the second time in her life is she about to unmask a killer in a debut novel that has already been optioned for a limited series by actress Emma Stone and sold to a dozen countries around the world, Stacey Willingham has created an unforgettable character in a spellbinding thriller that will appeal equally to fans of Jillian, is it Jillian? Yeah, Jillian Flynn and Karen Slaughter. So I don't know who Jillian Flynn is, but I do know who Karen Slaughter is as an author. I have read her work before and um, and I and I, I, I can kind of see it and I'm going to talk about that later. But before I forget, I do want to say as I'm reading the, 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 the synopsis, I did realize there was one more content warning I did not include. I forgot about and I will talk about it and I will say it now it is addiction. Um... If I choose to reference it uh, in the review, I'm still deciding, I will let you know because uh, it, it, I might reference it a little, but not in, in a way that, um, not, not pretty deeply, but there is, there is a, a bit of addiction in there. Um, so keep, keep that in mind. So, yeah. Um. I do know about the co-care and slaughter thing, and I will. I want to talk about that later. But for now, the prose of the book is really good. We're mainly stuck in Chloe's head, which expected because it's written in first person, you know. Um, although in first person, you can have multiple perspectives, but in this case, we only have Chloe's perspective, and and it, it it's you know we we're mainly stuck there. I will. I I I can't say that. I, I love her as a character, but I also don't hate her as a character, but we, we are stuck in her head, so we're stuck following whatever, um, whatever will happen next. But, yeah. Anyway, I, I, I basically have a, um, I basically, uh, feel kind of iffy about it but the prose in general was good the pacing was okay i i don't hate this pacing i i find it mainly good i usually like this kind of pacing because it's a bit slower and it allows for things to build up naturally and very organically and all the very fun stuff um but the one thing i'll say is that while the pace i i read this book in one sitting side note i read this book in one sitting and while it's a slow, it's a slower book and it's kind of like a slow burn mystery, it does feel like you're re like it's a fast book and it feels like you're reading, uh, it, it feels like you're kind of, or at least I kind of feel like I'm flying through chapters. So it does feel that way for me. Um, like I'm flying through chapter, flying through the chapters, right? So uh, I, I do want to uh, say that. And I think the reason is, because the chapters are really short. Now, the reason, the reason I read this book in, um, the reason I read this book in, in like one sitting is because I have a tendency to procrastinate. Usually when I read book club books, um, that I usually, of course, have them as an audio, I usually read them as an audio book. Usually when we read, uh, when, when book club, books are chosen uh, for the month for Envision. They have to be on NLS Bard. And since they're in NLS Bard, I can always listen to them in, as an audio form. And the books that we choose are usually between, I would say six to 12 hours long, no longer than 12 hours. So because of that, and, uh, and the fact that I read at a 2.5 speed, 
I can actually read them um, really quickly. I can get through them really fast and I can read them in one sitting if if that is my my wish. So I can do that. So that is kind of what I do. I tend to read them in one sitting. But it still felt faster than most than than most of the books I think I uh not not most of the books but like it still felt faster be, than what the pace the pacing of the story suggests mainly because of the short chapters the chapters are extremely short I I don't I don't know how I would read in braille but I will tell you that the chapters at least in audio are very very short so they were it felt like I was kind of flying through the book. The themes explored, I think, are really interesting, especially themes of trust, especially when growing up in a um, in a home with uh, where you thought things were one way, but you realize things are another. Um, so that's another thing. Another thing to mention, I think, about the writing is um, is that dependent i uh, depending on on the stories on the story for you you might find this to be if you're a um i don't know I, i'm not gonna say seasoned thriller reader but if you if you have read a, a, some books in the thriller genre or in the thriller or mystery genre you might find this book to be very predictable i definitely did um i found this book to be very very predictable um this story i i can i could kind of see it like i predicted i predicted a couple of things i remember one of the things that came up and i was like oh that's something like here i'm gonna give you broad spoiler right now i'm gonna give you guys a broad spoiler and i'm not gonna explain what happens at the end so in the book when the dad is arrested when chloe's father is arrested we he does confess and there is an interview where he talks about why he did what he did and i was like okay it's a false confession of some kind i literally said it's a false confession of some kind that's my thought it was a false confession and then by the end i was right but not in the way i expected so i think that's good so it's like predictable but it offers a twist that maybe you didn't expect i know i didn't but other than that, though, it is still a very predictable, a very predictable book. It would have been really cool. There were certain things that I was like, oh, it would have been so cool if this happened. And maybe I'll talk about those, but I, I'm going to do this spoiler free first and then I'll do a spoiler section. How about that? So that was one thing. Um, so that is one thing that I would talk about. It, it, it was definitely predictable. Um, in, 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 so that's, yeah the characters were okay the main character we kind of get to see again is chloe so we don't get to see her as much as a um i'm sorry we don't get to see the other characters as much as chloe so i i have very little i i have very little like thoughts about uh the other characters when it came to chloe i didn't dislike her and i didn't like her i i found her to be really interesting i have a friend who read this book and loved it and gave it five stars and one of the things they said was that he uh they appreciate the realism when it came to this book uh they are studying it, uh criminal justice so he they mentioned that this is the they appreciate the 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 realism and i i was like okay cool and so take that what i just said for what you will because well, I, I found it kind of interesting and I can appreciate the realism. That doesn't mean I, d I didn't get sli slightly annoyed and very, and especially at the end, which I, I want to talk about the ending, especially the twist in a minute, but that is a thing. Um, I feel like a lot of the, not all the relationships, but some of the relationships feel kind of okay. They don't feel not, um, I don't know. I, I just didn't feel much for the relationships that we had there it was very interesting to see her relationship with daniel and also the reporter as well uh whose name i have outright forgotten so it was an interesting thing uh it was also an interesting thing to see her relationship with herself and how she's coping with everything that happened so right mo at this very moment i am going to talk about 
a spoiler in the book and it involves a um her being addicted to uh prescription pills so give me uh so skip forward if you don't want to hear about i'd say 30 seconds maybe uh 10 to 30 seconds and then come back or yeah or mute me or something i don't know but um basically throughout the story um while she her while she herself says that um uh, that she doesn't have a problem it is very explicitly uh we we as the reader explicitly see that she is addicted to uh prescription pills and she uh goes and she basically what she does in order for others not to find out is she uh gets prescription pills and she prescribes them uh to her boyfriend so what she does is she 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 puts a prescription under his under his name and then she buys them for herself and he somehow never finds out at the end it's not told that he finds out so that is a spoiler now uh that is spoiler for the ending but he never finds out and i'm like what i mean yes he has his own trouble past too so uh but and they it, but and they don't really talk to each other like the communication between them non-existent that much so that is one of the things that happened so yeah it's 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 not great and what's interesting is that when someone kind of brings up there is a person that kind of brings up her her issues and her usual her, some of her uh past the way that she reacted to uh certain relationships and, and like like, are you sure you don't have a problem or whatever? Her response is, I'm a psychologist. And I'm like, yep. Yet you have your own issues. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it, 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 it's it's a thing. It's it's a thing. Um, so that that is something I found to be really interesting. Um, I think to 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 discuss i thought that was a really interesting theme um i want to talk about the twist so spoilers for the big twist at the end so basically i was right like i said that the father did do a false confession but it turns out that the false confession was um the false confession basically was to protect Chloe's brother, whose name I've absolutely forgotten. And it turns out he was the one that was making, that was making people, uh, that was making people disappear. So it, that's something that turns out to be the case. And it turns out he's the one that's the serial killer and that dad was in jail for years. So it was a false confession. So I, I, I predicted the false confession, but I did not predict that he would have, he would do it to, uh, to protect his son hoping that it hope or hopefully change things that his son would be good but that is what happened and i was a very surprised and also you uh, one of the other things that i thought was really interesting that was explored by the book which was another spoiler and by the ending it'll make sense and, and in the end it may kind of make sense which was interesting is the idea of being inspired by a serial killer so we find out that uh, Daniel, her boyfriend, um, her boyfriend's sister disappeared when she was 13. That is what we learn in the, in the story, in the story that he, that she disappeared and nobody knows where she went and all that stuff. We learn, uh, I'm not going to talk about it deeply, but by the way, content warning for this. We learn that Daniel basically was in an abusive home. I'm not going to go further. Um, but basically we, we learn that and we find out that his sister disappeared. Later in the end, um, Daniel is suspected of being a, the, a copycat serial killer by Chloe and the reporter and, and all that stuff. And she, they go visit his mother and you find out, you know, she lives in a certain way. And I'm not going to talk about how that works. You will find out if you read the book. Uh, but basically she 
they find out how she she lives and all that stuff and uh she still we find out that she's still with the person who uh the abuser basically and they ask about her they ask about her daughter and she she suspects that her son basically kind of took her away because uh, he you know she suspected that you know he was not a good person supposedly and she they they visited the they, they they went to his old room and one of the things that they found is these clippings of Chloe's dad um when he confessed to everything that happened like the articles and all that stuff and she suspects that yes he is the serial killer and she automatically uh you know blames him and everything and she she she's trying to figure out how to get him caught and all that stuff and everything that happens with that other things happen you find out he's not a serial killer but what you do find out is that he did make his sister disappear not like killing her or anything he uh he came he came from school and some things was ha something was happening and he wanted to protect her so what he did was he he took inspiration from the from the serial killer from from him and he made her disappear and now she lives in a different state and she has no contact with her with her mom or any of their family and I thought that was kind of an interesting thing and it's like how you can be inspired by a serial killer to be a criminal but apparently but you know some people might be inspired to actually do good like this guy um and I thought that was a really interesting uh exploration of uh, that I found kind of interesting in the book um so as for Karen Slaughter fans I've read good amount of her, of the books that were that uh that were available to me in NLS Bard. I read the um Grant County series. I read the um or uh the Will Trent series. I don't know if there are going to be any other books on that series. I should check if there are going to be any other books on Will Trent because I did like the Will Trent series. It was really interesting. I really liked it. Um it was enjoyable. I read, uh, I think it's called Blonde Hair, Blue Eyes, which is a short story prequel to Pretty Girls. So I read it. I think if you like Pretty Girls, you could like this book. Um, however, I will say that it fits the idea that Karen Slaughter had in her book. Like it had like that a similar formula. But I will say that I enjoyed Pretty Girls a lot more. I am someone who kind of enjoyed it a little bit more just because I enjoyed the gratuitous violence that was in Pretty Girls. And I, I felt like Karen Slaughter did a, uh, took an interesting exploration of like the serial killer. Uh, the idea of a serial killer living in your own home and took it to some to a point that we um, That I thought was really interesting specifically Which is where I thought you know would be really interest would have been really interesting So in pretty girls spoilers if you haven't read it, but in pretty girls you find out That the one of the main characters is married to a serial killer uh, specifically she is married to the man who made her sister Julia disappear. He was the one, they never found her. They, um, in the story, ha takes place a couple of years after Julia disappears, but in the story, it is very well told that you never found her body. They never found her body. They never found any trace of her. She just disappeared. And I can't remember how she, she finds out everything, but um, they, uh, but I know that he like, he along with other people there were other people that kind of knew about this stuff and there they they like did like uh uh they did kind of like torture porn basically they they filmed what they did to these girls these young girls and so yeah one of the main characters was married to the serial killer and specifically the man who killed this uh her sister 
and he had plans to target her other sister um which is why her other uh her other sister basically had this whole thing where where she made sure her daughter took self-defense classes knew how to uh like fix her tires, fix a flat tire in like three minutes. And she knew all this stuff in order to, uh, for her daughter not to suffer the same, uh, the same fate that her sister Julia did. But at, by the end of it, it does explore the idea of having a serial killer in your, in your home and you not even knowing it, not to mention having a serial killer in your home, but also having good memories and and him acting like the family man and he is there and you have the best memories because you never well you never know what's happening but you have really good memories of, with this person and I thought that the, the expression was really interesting which is why I thought that if you're going to make this this uh because like I said the th uh this book was kind of predictable Flicker in the Dark was predictable so if you're going to keep this predictability I thought it would have been really interesting personally, if the dad really was a serial killer, but they never, they never knew it until that summer. And he confessed for one reason or another, or there was evidence of it or something like that. Just basically make it, make it real that he really was a, a, a serial killer, right? But the children and the mom had good memories with this person and they 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 had um they they he acted you know he was a fan he was part of the family he acted regularly like a regular person and then instead have chloe kind of still be coping with the fact that um of course have her have her trust issues and even give her all the issues you have including the addiction to uh all these prescription pills if you like but have her deal with the consequences or or the facts that she that her father really was a serial killer and have the copycat be a thing and and everything but have her deal with the fact that he was he was a, a serial killer and that she lived with one and that she had good memories with one maybe at the end it would be like yes he was a bad person but it's still okay to have um to to keep those good memories i think it's important that it's like one of those things that it's like if even if if, if you live with anybody and they, it maybe they they didn't treat you the best way but you still have you still have good memories of this person and while they may have been bad that doesn't mean you have to um that doesn't mean that you have to not um remember those memories or or not feel I don't know like just not feel um like you uh like you basically not you shouldn't feel guilty for having them or remembering that yeah things were like this you know um I remember this one day when I did this with this person I I think it's it's good to um I think bring up the fact that it's there's nothing wrong with having with having these good memories so I felt like that would be really interesting if it was ever explored I don't know that was just me let me know what you think about that but that is my review let me know what you think of a flicker in the dark in the comments I would love to see what you think if you've read it do you plan to read it or no um let me know and uh, yeah, let me know in the comment section. Um, if you're gonna do spoilers, let us know uh, in the comments. And also if you're going to use anything that requires some kind of content warning, I would also appreciate for you to let, let me know. Let us, let me and everybody else know, okay? Thank you for that. Okay, hello everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you enjoyed my content, please remember to subscribe and comment and like and turn on notifications so you're aware when I release videos. If you're looking to check out my writing, my website is in the description. And if you would like to support me in any way, my Kofi is also in the description. Remember that you can check out my book there uh, in my bookshop as an ebook and audiobook format. You can also check it out on, on other retailers, of course. Um, but I will be linking the Kofi page um, 
just to make it a little easier for all of us <laughs> anyway um so you can do you can check it out there and um you can also um commission me for services i have there including beta reading uh that mainly the ones that are open are beta reading and audio description critiques if you're doing uh any projects that involve audio description um so if um you're interested in any of that all of it will be linked in the description but until next time consume stories Bye.